hopefully remember the process that we have for um, our sine, cosine, secant, cosecant, tangent, and cotangent. So the first thing to remember, guys, whenever we're dealing with secant and cosecant, the, st the step-by-step process we want to do for these graphs is to graph their um, reciprocal, which would be cosine of x. All right, so what we want to do for the time period is graph cosine of x, forget about the secant, just graph the reciprocal function, and then what we'll do is after we're done with that, then we'll be able to apply from that function how to graph the new, um, how to graph secant. So first thing we do, remember guys, when we're having a sine or a cosine, first thing we always look at is our amplitude. So to find the amplitude, remember it's the absolute value of a, which in this case, is going to be a negative one half. So my amplitude is going to be one half. That's going to tell me the distance above and below my x-axis that the graph is going to go. We also know that it's a negative a, so therefore we're going to have a reflection. So I'm just going to write that down so I don't forget it. And that is going to be a reflection over the x-axis. Whenever you have a negative outside your function, you're going to be reflecting the x-axis. Next thing we need to do is look at our period. Remember our period is 2 pi over b. And remember b is the number that's in front of your x. In this case it's 1. So we have 2 pi over 1, which is 2 pi. Okay. Last important thing guys that we want to take is, remember we have intervals on a, on a period for sine and cosine. The intervals are four even intervals. So what we want to do is determine what, those four, what the distance is between those four intervals. So I'm going to take 2 pi divided by 4. You want to do this for sine and cosine. 2 pi divided by 4 is going to give you pi over 2. All right. So let's go ahead and draw a graph here. So let's say this is 1 half. This would be 1. Negative 1 half. That would be 1. Now remember, my graph is only going to go between negative 1 half and 1 half, right? Um, the period, the distance it takes for the graph to complete one complete function is 2 pi. So let's make that 2 pi here. Now remember I said there's four even intervals. So if you kind of like split this in half, there's four even intervals. Between those four intervals, the distance is pi over 2. So this first point is pi over 2. The next point would be pi over 2 plus pi over 2, which is 2 pi over 2. Right, Sam? Well, 2 pi over 2 is just going to give me pi. Then I add another pi over 2. Pi over 2 plus pi is going to give me 3 pi over 2. All right? Now, um, like I said, guys, it's really helpful if you just kind of like very lightly graph what, the what this function is going to look like. Now, remember, there's a reflection. Usually, a cosine graph, which it crosses the y-intercept um, you know, when uh, y is positive, right? Our parent graph across here, our amplitude now has been changed to one half. However, now we have a reflector of the x-axis, so now my graph is going to start down here. Make sense? Reflection, instead of starting up here, it's going to start down here. So my graph is going to cross at negative one half. There's going to be an intercept. There's my maximum. There's my minimum. And here's where it's going to end. So what I'm going to do is just going to lightly. I'm sorry? How do I know what it looks like? One thing, a couple things I know what the parent graph looks like. Remember, the parent graph is the cosine function. I told you guys to write it down, right? You guys have to know that the parent graph of the cosine function has four important points. I'm not approximating because what I did was I took my period, I divided it by four, and that's why I know that the first intercept is at pi over two. The maximum is at pi. The next intercept is at 3 pi over 2. And the final endpoint of a first period is at 2 pi. So I'm not approximate. I'm fa I'm no, I just know exactly what the shape of the graph is going to look like. But I know I need to know exactly where those points are. Okay, so Make sense? The next one is always going to be like the second one? Yeah, yeah, you can think of it that way. Yeah. Um, all right, so now we need to make sure, though, we're graphing at least two periods. So let me kind of get rid of this. Um. So if I add another, um, uh, let's see here, add another um, pi over 2. So we have 3 pi over 2, um, 4 pi over 2. This would be 5 pi over 2, 6 pi over 2. Cool. 
Okay, you could also go in the negative direction. Okay, so everybody sees what this graph is. It's very helpful just to do that line. Yes? I thought that it was started at the one, or like the negative one, not one half. It would. Remember, your parent graph starts at one, right? But then our amplitude changed it now. Instead of our amplitude being one, now our amplitude is at one half. Oh. That, and then we had a reflection, so I reflected it down to the negative. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. So a couple things you guys need to remember about cosine and secant. Secant of x is equal to 1 over cosine of x, right? Everybody remember that? Yes. Hopefully. So if you guys look at this point, what is my y, um, what is my y value at this point? <laughs> what is my y value? Zero. Zero, right? X equals pi over two, the y value is zero. So what we could say is, if I ask for sine or secant of pi over two, what is the secant value of pi over two? Well, that's the cosine value of pi over two. The cosine value of pi over two is zero. So can you evaluate for one over zero? No, it's undefined, right? So it's really important for you guys to know and recognize that whenever there's an intercept, that means my cosine is equal to zero, right? So therefore, for the secant graph, it's going to be a vertical asymptote. So what you're going to do is you're going to take all the intercepts for your cosine graph and make a vertical asymptote. Anywhere there's a, a zero of your cosine graph. Then, to finish off the process, all we're going to do is we're going to take our maximum and our minimum points of our cosine graph, and we're just going to make a parabola going in the opposite direction. Can you do one more? Okay. Then, once I've completed this, I don't need, need the cosine graph. The cosine graph we just used as an A. So now what I can simply do is just. So why are you Okay. You guys have any questions on that? 